With the minerals, in line with the new mineral policy and mining legislation, government developed a mechanism for biometrically registering all artisanal and small-scale miners in the country. In this regard, biometric registration for uh, small artisans in Uganda commenced in January 2019. The value of minerals produced was worth Uganda shillings 158 billion and revenue amounting to Uganda shillings 16 0.7 billion was generated as non-tax revenue. The investor, Guangzhou Dongsong Energy Group Company, installed a phosphate processing plant in Tororo and is already developing the Sukuru phosphate resource into phosphates. They, they are also going to produce steel, glass, cement, and brick products. Again, on the side of, 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 of power, um, the ones which would be commissioned in the near future, uh, the power station, there is Karuma, that one we have already talked about, Waki, there is also Sindila, Ndugutu, Nyamugasani, one, 15 megawatts, Nyamugasani, two, five megawatts, Chikagate, 16 megawatts. Then you have uh, uh, you have Karuma Isimba Hydro Power Stations. You have uh, Muzizi and so on. One of the most dynamic ways to expand an economy is for the government to invest in the construction of roads, airports, schools, hospitals, railways, government offices, waterworks, and power dams using labor-intensive technology to absorb some of the unemployed youth. Mm -mm. Okay. Financing infrastructure development is a tested method to increase employment, accelerate growth, increase incomes, and increase savings. The key results under the roads on both the national, district, urban, and uh, community access roads network are summarized below. Oh, there are so many roads here. If I, if I read them, they will kill you. Mukono chetu mekato sinyenga, oruyo guru, bulima kaboya, aksi moroto, kanon sembabure, sembabure vila maria, kashenyi mitoma, this one is of otafwire, the one who wanted tamad. Nansa na usu nju, Fort Porto Chenjojo, the Nairo Bridge, Nakarasi and Kabogu Bridges, and so on. So many roads here. Kampala Flyover, Rukunjiri Chihi, Shashaka Nungu, Masaka Kakata, Parisaka Monkori, upgrading of Kapchora Swam. Yeah, so you, you, re, you read all of this here. Maybe here what I could uh, read is uh, mention uh, rehabilitation works on the International Airport. That is all in the works. Um, revival of the national airline. The two... The two Bombardier CRIJ 900s were received on the 23rd of April 2019. Government revived the national carrier, which had stopped operations many years ago. Commercial operations are expected to commence in July 2019. 
The other two Bombardier CRJ 900s are expected in July and September. And recruitment of key staff for the national airline is completed. In the transport sector, we moved to solve the issue of air transport. Ugandans like traveling. Oh, Banang. <laughs> they like traveling. Each year, they were donating US dollars, 450 million, to other countries through foreign travel. Besides, there was a lot of inconvenience to traveling Ugandans by not having direct flights and even being charged discriminatively air, air fares. Since banks were wasting our time, we paid cash. <laughs> you know, some of these banks are not serious. You know, there was one bank uh, that Ah, I said, watch our. We have money. It's just that. Uh, <laughs> two aircraft bombardiers are already here, and another two will come in the month of July and September, as I have said. This will be for regional travels. We shall straight away go for international intercontinental flights to a few high volume destinations of travelers to and from Uganda. And we are acquiring two air buses for that purpose. <laughs> Those will come in December 2020, and the other one will come in January 2021. That will be just before the... <laughs> Some of the people should know the right address and then you... <laughs> the Standard Gauge Railway, government continues to fast track the development of the Standard Gauge Railway with the expectation to improve the quality of transport systems and provide a global competitive quality service. This standard gauge really took a bit of time because uh, in Africa and in Uganda, there are a lot of flies. And whenever there's some little food, f flies come all over the place. But you know, I've got uh, <laughs> So, we really had to, to struggle because so many people wanting to distort. But now we have got a good, uh, a good uh, formula, a good package and uh, we, shall, we shall conclude so that we start building the standard gauge railway. When we sign, then we will see what we would have signed. But uh, as we are waiting, we have already acquired 93.9 acres of land for the right of way and 376 project affected persons were compensated. The Uganda Railways Corporation reinstated freight services across Lake Victoria and passenger train services in the Nama and the Kampala passenger line. This is the old line. The old line also we are repairing it. The old line. Averages of 18,000 metric tons of cargo per month and 2,000 passengers per day were being moved using the freight and passenger train services respectively. Resettlement action plan for the rehabilitation of Tororo Guru railway line was approved 
and procured, and the procurement of, of a contractor for rehabilitation works is in final stages. Rehabilitation works are planned to commence during the first quarter of financial year 2019-20. We need to repair that line to Papuach and also to, because the standard gauge, when we start building it, it will take some time, maybe two years or, or, or three. So what shall be happening? We want to start using the old line because it is cheaper than the road transport. And that's why we, we want to revive it. 170 water ve vessels were in, uh, this is marine safety, marine safety. 170 water vehicles were inspected, of which 131 inland vessels were approved and licensed to provide transport services mainly on lakes Victoria, Chog, and Albert. Also, 12 locations for the establishment of search and rescue facilities have been identified on Lake Victoria, Chog, and Albert. 400 kilometers equivalent of roads will be upgraded to bitumen standard. 332 kilometers equivalent to rehabilitated reconstruction and 58 bridges constructed. Again, these are the roads, you read them. There are so many of them here. Mpiji, Kanuni, Kabrasoke, Ruero, these are the new ones, like Ruero, Tarangwa, Muyembe, Naka, Piripirit, Ruenkunyu, which my people in the north cannot pronounce, they say Ruenkunye. It is Ruenkunyu. Ruenkunyu, I came to learn in Runyoro, they are called Mkunguru in Runyankore. You get something which is like a swamp, but with small anthills, many small anthills. They are called Mkunguru in Runyankore, but apparently in Runyoro they are called Mkunyu. So this is Ruenkunyu. Renkunyu, Apach, Achoribul. This road was going to cause me some problems with my Achori, my Langi people. And they were saying that I'm paying more attention to the Achori side and I've forgotten this side. But very soon, uh, everybody will be laughing. Renkunyu, Apach, Achoribur, 191 kilometers. These are long roads, 191 kilometers. Uh -huh. Busegampiji, we want to make this Busegampiji an expressway with the number of. Nayanankumbi, Busabara, Munyonyo. There are some roads there which are dusty in, 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 in that town. Semi some town area. Chira Matuga. Nakaseke. Nakaseke Singo Singo Road. Atiak Laropi. Moroto Loktanyara. Then the oil roads, Karugutu and Toroko. Don't worry, you're about to survive my speech. Hmm? But, but, but the other man is not uh, representing his people, so I don't know. <laughs> so the oil roads, Karugutu, Ntoroko, and Kaboya, Buhuka, Masi, Ndibiso, Hohwa, Nyaruongwa, Karusheshe, Butore, and Kabari, Kizaramfundi, Rusari, Rankonge, and then there are also these town roads. There's a project called Dukar. 
or Duchar or whatever. It is a district something something. And we are doing a number of roads in Butareja, Buyende, Ruero, Kamuli, Mayuge, Serere, Chienkwanzi, Buhueru, Dokolo, Hoima, Kapchorwa, Moroto, Kasese, Arua, Ajumani, Sironko, Blamburi, Rubanda, Kayunga, Mukono, Kariro, and Rakai. The, the other man never comes to meeting, so that is a magazine fellow. Ngenda club and to ono taja mutiyo. Ngenda kumulopa. Upgrade selected urban roads in Gulu. If you go to Gulu now, the area has changed. Mm -hmm. Now you see La Mera claiming a baby who is. I don't want. I, I don't want to fight with the with La Mera over over the child, like the other women whom Solomon had sought out. Because my sister, she said the baby is hers. But from what I heard, the baby belonged to somebody else. <laughs> Okay, we share. <laughs> no, we share by bringing up the baby together. So the road is in Gulu, Mitiana Municipal Council, Riantonde, Cavalore, Capturwa, and so on. This urban road, road, road program will continue. It is a good one, really. It makes the towns look smart. <laughs> on the side of tourism, tourism has increasingly become important to Uganda's economy. It is a driving force in propelling economic growth and continues to be the leading foreign exchange earner for Uganda, generating US dollars 1.5 billion foreign exchange earnings in 2017, compared to 1.37 billion in 2016. In 2018, the sector registered increased performance as reflected in the visits to Uganda's national parks and other sites such as Uganda Wildlife Education Center and the source of the Nile. Visitors to national parks increased by 39,000 from 285,000 to 325,000 in 2018. Although the proportion of leisure visitors to total visitor arrivals is still relatively small, it increased from 18% in 2016 to 20% 20 in 2017. And tourist arrivals in Uganda have steadily increased from 850,000 2008 to over 1.4 million arrivals in 2017. The direct contribution of tourism to GDP in 2017 was Uganda shillings 2 trillion, which is 2.9% of GDP, while the total contribution including wider effects from investment, the supply chain, and induced income impacts was Uganda shilling 6 trillion, 6.8 trillion. That is 7.3% of GDP, up from 6 trillion in 2016. In terms of, of contribution to employment in the economy, tourism generated 229,000 jobs directly in 2017. This is 2.4% of total employment. This includes employment by hotels, travel agents, 
airlines and other passenger transportation services. The overall goal for the government is to attract 4 million tourist arrivals and increase the contribution of tourism to GDP from shilling 7.3 trillion to shilling 14.6 trillion at the end of the year 2020. To achieve this goal, the following has been done and will be pursued further. Boundary management and surveillance has been enhanced. Tourism infrastructure and products are essential in improving visitor experience and hence have huge influence on length of visa stay and expenditure. During financial year 2018-19, a total of 1,100 kilometers of trail network and 90 bridges were maintained and 67 kilometers of trails opened in the protected areas. Government will continue to focus on human wildlife conflict. Whenever I go to Moya and, and uh, Rumirizi, people talk of the elephants, but the wildlife people are now building that electric fence to, to keep the animals away. Community engagements, resource conservation, research and ecological monitoring, and the general management of Uganda's 10 national parks and 10 wildlife reserves. Maintenance of museums and cultural heritage sites and conservation of art artifacts will be prioritized. Government plans to promote Uganda's tourist attractions and reach out to more domestic and potential international tourists through a participation in international tourism marketing exhibitions and regional marketing events to consolidate the gains so far realized in promoting destination Uganda. Higher seven marketing destination representation farms to aggressively promote destination Uganda in the international African domestic markets. C, design and construct the Equator Monument in Queen Elizabeth National Park, complete and furnish the Vista Information Center at Sheraton. The tempo of Uganda's development is however interfered with by the action of corrupt public servants and political actors. That is why corruption is now public enemy number one. Hence, the government has put in place a number of strategies to eliminate corruption and promote the principle of zero tolerance to corruption. These strategies are intended to create an even more conducive environment for good governance and the rule of law to flourish in Uganda. Government has provided more funding to the Inspectorate of Government to increase their capacity to verify the leader's declaration. And here I heard what the speaker was saying. The speaker said something. Omanye Mibswaza. Ebi Mibswaza, Totua Gara Kubi Uge Rawan. Nda Kantuka Yogedi. Kantuwa Aku. Na Echi Runji Mari Yabara Tumaka Tegedi. We shall discuss those when we are by. But some of these people don't come. You come as observers. When I call NRM Caucus, you come as observers. So that you don't, you don't miss some of these magazines. Eh? Or speaker, can you get down? I'm going to go to the call. Ah, I'm going to go to the Taka kuonge yu manenu kwa, kwa chizungu. Wale wazungu watafikiri tuko watu wa ina gani. Wache baki kwa ruga za hapa rafu. Hmm. Government has provided more funding to the inspectors of government to increase their capacity to verify the leader's declarations. The, verif the verification exercise will be increased further to crack down on public officers who have illicitly acquired wealth at the expense of effective service delivery to the citizens. Prevention of corruption has been enhanced by increasing citizen participation in the monitoring of government programs 
and encouraging citizens to report cases related to abuse of public office. In this regard, the government implemented the Transparency, Accountability and Anti-Corruption component in NUSAF II, Northern Uganda Action Fund, by engaging citizens in monitoring government programs. A new unit was created headed by Lieutenant Colonel Edith Nakarema. There is a 24 hours call center where people can report bribery, bribery cases, embezzlement, land evictions, crime ETC. The unit then contacts the police and the IGG so that they handle the cases. On the side of human capital, I would like to, to comment on education and health. Since the elections in 2016, a total of 256 new classrooms for government primary schools has, have been added. This brings the total number of classrooms in permanent materials for government primary schools to 102,557. It really gives me a lot of pleasure because, you know, when you have been around for a long time, you really enjoy some of these things. Because when we started, the government primary school classrooms were in permanent materials were 28,000. Now, we are talking of 102,000 classrooms, 102,557. These, these are the government primary school classrooms with permanent materials. The government primary schools are now 12,437 in total. Out of the 9,000, the Ugandans really like power. They have created so many parishes. The parishes were only 5,000. Now they are 9,000. Can you imagine? Out of 9,096 old parishes in Uganda, there is at least one primary school in 6,167 parishes. The only parishes without government primary schools are 1,100 out of the 9,000. The total enrollment of pupils in the government primary schools is 7 million 107,000 and something. The enrollment of pupils in private schools is 1 million 733,000. The total enrollment, therefore, in primary schools, in the government and private, is 8.8 .8 million children. In the government primary schools, the teacher-pupils ratio is one teacher for 43 pupils. You, 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 you go, you, 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 you have got vehicles, you, you have got vehicles, order, you, you order members. And, and check. Order on the members, please. You have got vehicles, you have got vehicles, go and check. That's why you are, you, you, you are, you are given over, over, oversight role. The, the ministry have told me this. You, you go and check. You don't have to call, you go and confirm. Uh, since two, 2016, a total of 40, 48 new classrooms in permanent materials have been added to the stock of classrooms for the government secondary schools. The total number of classrooms for government secondary schools 
is now 12,696. There are 1,194 government secondary schools with an enrollment of 679,000 students. The private schools are more. You see the wisdom of NRM. We, we opened, uh, because the Wanyankore say, when you make alarm for food, you make a smaller one. So, so that, so that uh, many people don't hear and, and come and overwhelm the food. But when you make alarm for war, you make a big one. Now some people think that, uh, so we made a big alarm and the private sector came. So the private sector have opened more schools than the government. The private sector schools are 8,269 with an, an, an enrollment of 778,000. Actually, they have got more students. Fine, fine, fine. The, 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 those Wanyankoro viewers say, with your mind, wisdom can defeat strength. So we are wise, and we said, let's open. Because educating, struggling with the ignorance is a war. So anybody who has got capacity, open. Open a secondary school, and there are many rich people in Uganda. You see them when you go to Kampala Road. You know, our, our Uganda people say, Syria, umulabira kumuviri. The one who says he's, he doesn't eat, you see him from the, his stomach. So, so, so the, the rich people in Uganda, you can see them when you stand on Kampala Road, you see how, how fat they are. Now, if they are so fat, why do you have to struggle with the problem of education alone? So we, we open. In the, in the colonial times, those who are old enough, there was only one private secondary school. It was called Agri Memorial. It was only one. Uh. But now you hear of 8,269 with an enrollment of 778,000 students. And these are from you people, because you, you have something in the pocket. So you go. Then for us, we remain with our our poor people. They remain in our schools. Uh -huh. No, we shall check on, on, on how they are passing. Our 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 one thousand one hundred schools of the of the poor. How many students? are passing in with good grades. You, you can check. The, the records are there. Uh, out of the total of 1,167 all sub-counties, a total of 856 sub-counties have at least one secondary school. The sub-counties without a secondary school, government, is a government secondary school. The sub-counties without a government secondary school each are 311. The total enrollment of students in government and private secondary schools is now 1.45 million. There are 99 government technical and vocational schools 
with a total enrollment of 70,000 students. The universities in Uganda are today 50, 11 of them being public universities. The total enrollment in universities is 186,000, 96,000 in public universities and 90,000 in private ones. In public universities, we have been rationalizing courses and also emphasizing science subjects, mathematics, accountancy, and auditing, quantitative economics, and management. The school, tertiary, and university systems must create wealth and job creators, not just clerical job seekers. The total public service jobs are 470,000. These do not mean much for a population of 41 million people that moreover will be 81 million people by 2040. It is the private sector in the form of the four sectors which I talked about, commercial, agriculture, industrial service, and ICT, that will create jobs and wealth. Already, the strategic bottleneck is still around notwithstanding. Industry is employing 700,000 people, service is 1.3 million people, and ICT 170,000 people. So you can see that already the non-agricultural sectors are employing 2 million Ugandans. And this is very, very encouraging, because when you are employing one person, remember he has got five people at home, his family. On the issue of health, there is a total of 19 referral hospitals, including Mulago. Mulago is trying to be a super specialized hospital. With, with some partners, we are building super specialized hospitals in Roboa, and another one by His Highness the Aga Khan. The aim of this is to stop the hemorrhage of money to the outside. Each year, Uganda has been losing US dollars 187 million to the outside, especially India, for medical reasons. However, health is not in treatment, but in prevention. The ways of prevention are well known and cost effective. They are immunization, hygiene, nutrition, behavior change, lifestyle discipline, safe water, and vector control. Vector control, mosquitoes, and all that. If you address all those aspects, 80% of the sicknesses will be eliminated. By immunizing against the 13 diseases, we have eliminated polio, measles, etc. But by killing the mosquitoes with indoor spraying, killing the tsetse flies, we, we eliminated malaria and sleeping sickness. By just clean water, you get rid of cholera, intestinal worms, Bilhazia, and the Guinea worm. Prevention has been achieved through the health center threes. There are 1,002 1, health center threes in the whole of Uganda. 331 have health, health center twos to be upgraded to health center threes and money is already found for that purpose. So that means that leaves only 132 sub-counties that are still lacking at least 133. As pointed out above, safe water is part of the preventive medicine. There are now 65,000 boreholes in Uganda. My team will go to audit these boreholes. Are they working? And, and, and if not, why? Somebody must account. <laughs> we, 
We are aiming at having at least one safe water source per village. Borehole, protected spring, or piped water. A total of 11.3 million Ugandans are now using piped water. Hitherto, we have been putting more emphasis on budgeting on the roads and electricity. You remember, we are not putting yet a, a lot of money in water. Because we can't, we can't do everything. We, for us, we believe this year, we spent Uganda shillings 4,700 billion on the Ministry of Works and Transport. That is 4.8 trillion. And shillings 2.4 trillion billion, 2 trillion on the Ministry of Energy, Electricity. Yet, on the Ministry of Water, we spent 907 billion for both safe water for drinking and water for production. This, this must be understood because there is no other way. You cannot do all things at a go. That, that indiscipline, that confusion must get out of people's heads. When you see somebody, this one and also the other one, you know that one, that one is not a leader. Because I have led in all situations, difficult situations, that's how we manage. The discipline of one by one makes a bundle is, it, is it indispensable if we are to succeed. Kamwe Kamwe Ngum Ganda, the Banyankore would say. Water for drinking, water for production, water for hygiene, water for industry comes from one main source rain. Rain itself comes from water. You know, we have got one of our very clever tribes in Africa, one of the cleverest tribes in Africa, are the Vasoga. The Vasoga, you, you know, with the Vajankore, they, they, they have a lot of words. They call rain and Zura. Then they have uh, water is amazing. Then amazing also has got different uh, different types. Omtunga. Omtunga. Omtunga is uh, the runoff water. Then Omwejemure is the flood water. But the Masoga said this is all a waste of time. They said all those are Amadi. So you can see how, how clever they are. The rain is Amadi. The, 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 the water running on the ground is Amadi. The water itself is Amadi. So why do you waste time? Since it's all water, so we, we, we may have to run from the Wasoga. Rain itself comes from water. The rain comes from water. Yes, water comes from rain. But rain itself comes from water. Which water? Which water? You listen carefully, please. Water of the lakes, swamps, Forests, river, rivers and oceans. The distant ones such as Indian Ocean and the Pacific. According to our scientist Mafavi, not the not Nandara. <laughs> Uh, 
according to our scientists in Mafavi, 40% of our rain comes from our local water bodies and wetlands, and 60% comes from the oceans. In ignorance, some of our people have been destroying the wetlands and forests. Hence, the erratic rains, like the ones we saw recently, this must be stopped. And it is easy to stop. People in the wetlands and the encroaching on the lake shores, river banks, etc., should peacefully leave these bodies and we help them. And we help them with alternative livelihood. Especially fish farming, which is even more lucrative than rice growing and growing yams. Besides, the good news is that we can even do agriculture without soil, the what I said before, the hydroponics. Apart from interfering with the rain, cutting tree cover also cause, causes violent wind downpours. A hunga or a, even a shato. A shato is the, uh, I don't know what they call it, the shato, the, the one which is like a snake, cyclone, uh, as well as landslides. It also causes soil erosion and the silting of water bodies such as lakes. Uganda should not be a country of the uninformed. It should be a country of the enlightened. The other day at Namugongo, I challenged religious leaders to extend what Christianity has been saying since 1877, when they set foot in Uganda. In Rinyankwere, they say, a dini e kareatom shana, a dini e kavingo mirma. Christianity brought light, om shana, to Africa and chased darkness, om mirma. Indeed, religion brought light in some aspects. My mother, an uneducated woman, rejected alcohol and the indiscipline that goes with it, learned how to boil milk instead of drinking it raw, which was the tradition, learned how to knit sweaters, learned how not to share cups and plates, Okunyerana appreciated education etc. All this was on account of religion. The Christians, the Muslims and others have all contributed in some of these, way, of these areas. However, there is still darkness in some of the crucial areas, such as land fragmentation on inheritance. Because these people who are, who are fragmenting land are Christians, are Muslims. They are led by people who go to Rome and come back who go to, to Canterbury, who go to Maka, but don't bring more than, because those, 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 those areas, especially Europe, they have got a lot of modern ways, like on inheritance, which I was talking about. So why wouldn't you bring that, that and also integrate it here among our own people? Like the issue of uh, poor, mecham, keken. Uh, poor, mecham, keken. Some of these people don't know our languages. They are just in Kampara. This is a mere yorubuto yoka, roka. Subsistence farming. This is Ubukafiri. How can you be a Christian in the modern way and you don't know that you need to make money? 
And yet, and yet you need education, you need health, you need better clothing, you need, and then you say you are a Christian. Huh? But you, you don't know that you need to, to modernize. How? The continuing with the subsistence farming, instead of doing commercial farming, when some do commercial farming, they do it without a chivaro, chura, aymar, otita, and attacking the environment contrary to what God had arranged. Let the religious people preach for the preservation of the environment. It is indeed a biblical commandment. In the book of Genesis, God commands man to look after the environment and not to destroy it. When you come to Chisozi, you find the huge preserved refugio, papyrus swamp, with its brown, rusty, rusty brown ferric oxide water, the Biroro. If the Christians and the Muslims do not look after the environment well, they will be in darkness, Omirima. Worse than that of the traditional worshippers that are wrongly and arrogantly called Abakafiri. These Abakafiri were a way of God. Rhanga, Rubanga, Katonda, Kancha, Kibumba. But they were also worshipping the mountains. You know the traditional people were worshipping the mountains. Uh. Kangave, Kangave, Kampindi, Rubama, Buyego, Buyego, Walium, Umsambo, Wakawumpuri, Magara, Warusi, ETC, the rock outcrops, the rivers. These people who are worshipping these Msamba, these spirits, which they said we are living in those areas. Each area had its msamba. Uh -huh. Each area had its, uh, its, uh, its ancestral spirit. And these, these people were worshipping that. Not, not worshipping it instead of God, but in addition, because they knew God was Kancha, that is Baruri, Kibumba, Katonda, Rhanga, Rubanga. Uh -huh. Those people are not as uh, so. If the the Christians and the Muslims are more enlightened, they are people of light. Omshana, Ekitangara. How can it be that you, you you don't know what these people knew? When I was reading the war in the Royal Triangle where almost all the people believe in the traditional religion as a supplement to the modern religion. Because for, for you who have never worked with, lived with the people, I really pity, pity you. Huh? They, uh, all, all those people, especially in some of the areas, they go to the church in the morning, but in the evening, I was able to infuse the sciences. Because you see, what you should be very careful about is arrogance. When you read people, please, wait towards us, you be humble. Don't go arrogant, you are the one who knows, you are the one who, please. This is part of the problem. War arrogance. Of course, me, I am, I am, I, I am somebody, but, but, but when, when I, when I lived among my people, I had to now listen to them carefully. Then they would tell my people, don't, don't, don't cook for the lead of the war pumpkins. 
pumpkins. Why? Because they have got a lot of water, and that means tears. So if if he eats a uh, suju, we are going to lose. We, we are going to lose. Many people are going to die, and we shall be crying. So 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 the, these people would come to to the camp. Bananga to mfumbira to mfumbira msevi ne suju. Suju na mazi mangi. So you, you, you people, you are just there floating. So then I would listen, oh, that's how you look at it. Then we go slowly, slowly. I, I link with them now. But when it, the way you come, oh, 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 ah, looking up, looking up. When I was reading the one in the Royal Triangle, where almost all the people believe in the traditional religion as a supplement to the modern religion, I was able to infuse the sciences into many of their activities. Medicine, because there's where, when I found one of my big supporters, he died recently, very influential man in the area, the one whom we thought would, would, would be enlightened. The whole leg was swollen, like this. I said, what happened, uh, so and so, I, didn't, I don't want to say his name. What happened, so and so? Bante get a talo. That they can put certain charm where you pass. And when, and when you pass there, the, 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 the foot will swell. This is the most prominent member of the NRM in the whole, in the whole sub-county. He was there, not going to hospital. They had put ash. They, they, they had put ash around the wound. So I had my doctors. I, I said, what's this? They said this is a medical condition. It is well known. It is it is called cellulitis. I said, what is what causes it? It's bacteria. Can it be treated? Yes. The man who gave him antibiotic and the man was cured. But but you find that because of the of the disconnection between the educated and these people. They don't, they don't know. They just go on with their own thing, their own thing, their own thing. Eh? Because you, you don't get to the people. So, the, so when I would go Sorolla and be with them, and then, oh, 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 what, what, what do you call this? Ah, this is how you go. Oh, but then I bring in now my idea. Like now, I was able to, 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 to help those people now know that a taro, which they thought was a dogo, was witchcraft, is actually a medical condition which is treatable. I, I'm sure that was the first time they heard of it in that area. I don't think anybody had ever told them. So the, the a taro serratus is not a dogo, witchcraft, but a bacterial infection, and that there was no hub that could stop bullets. Because also somebody has started telling them that, you know, like when a type, that, that if you hold something, the bullet will not catch you. Somebody had started telling them that. So I had also to, to deal with that. The only Dagara medicine for bullets is taking cover. and also trying to neutralize the one who is firing at you. With the patient political work, we can persuade our traditional believers from worshiping to respecting, because now they were worshiping those mountains, worshiping the spirits, but preserving them in the process. You can't go to, 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 to dig somewhere because there is a spirit there. 
So you don't, the, the effect is that people don't go to destroy the forest. Now, you, the Christians and the Muslims, you have no contribution, you are just there. And the environment is being destroyed. So what I will do is, as usual, to educate my people, you don't have to worship, but you can to, to respect the, these mountains. Of course, the traditional people do not only worship the hills of Sozi, they worship the ancestral spirits. That worship caused respect for nature. It is therefore wrong for the Christians and Muslims, led by more informed people, to have no respect for nature, God's creation, than our superstitious traditional believers. Kangave Hill, there was, there's a hill called Kangave. Kangave Hill was clothed with thick forest when we were fighting in that area. When I went there recently, it is completely bare, and the numerous rock boulders, Amayinja, which I did not know existed beneath the trees, are all now exposed. The encroachers ha have even gone into the Busemba swamp, into Danse, etc. While I appeal to the leaders, political, religious, cultural, I direct the chief administrative officers, the, those cows, and the sub-county chiefs, to persuade these encroachers to leave the swamps and the forests after they have harvested their current seasonal crop and never to come back. They do not have to use force. If the encroachers do not plan to leave voluntarily, the cows should write to the permanent secretaries of the presidency, prime minister, and head of the civil service for all of us to be involved, because I don't want to use force. I want to persuade these people to move peacefully. Any cow or sub-county chief who does not act will be dismissed and may be charged with relevant criminal offense after the, after the guidance of the Attorney General and the Director, Director of Public Prosecutions. Regarding the long-established rice, swamp rice growers of Maine, Eastern Uganda, I will visit the area again after my upcountry tour, we shall discuss how to, for instance, transition from destructive rice growing to the more lucrative and environment-friendly fish farming at the age of, at the ages of the swamp. In age ago, and not in the center of the swamp. I cannot end this address without talking about the historic task of ending the market and political fragmentation of Africa, initiated by the, the, the myopic indigenous chiefs and later on by the colonialists. Principle number two of the NRM is Pan-Africanism. This is not just a slogan or a cliche. It is a matter of survival for the African nations. China has a population and therefore an internal market of 1.3 billion people. Yet, as you can see in the news, they are struggling for access to other markets. Why? China has got 1.3 billion people inside their own country. But as you can see how they are arguing with the Americans about accessing other markets. Why? It is because the more consumers buy from you, the more prosperous you become. The factories produce more, they employ more people, they pay more taxes, more taxes help the government to build infrastructure, pay better salaries, and provide better social services, education, health, welfare. That is why, right from 1963, some of us have been in the Pan-Africanist movement. The integration of the whole of Africa into an African common market 
and those portions of Africa that are similar or compatible into political unions, confederations leading to political federations. I am happy to inform Ugandans the zigzag course notwithstanding, Africa and East Africa are now on the right trajectory. Recently, we signed the CFTA, the Continental Free Trade Area. This, of course, is not new. We had signed the Abuja Treaty in 1991 on the same mission. Nevertheless, our Baganda people say, Adinga na maoru, agajamu mukuto. The one who re re repeatedly eats the cold food will get satisfied eventually. I do not know why the Baganda underrated of horror the cold food, because me, I like the cold food. I like Oboro so much, I never eat the hot food. The Rinyankori equivalent is our agenda, Amaguru Tugamugaya. If you keep traveling, looking for something, in the end, the legs will reward you by giving you what you, by you getting what you wanted. Therefore, the search for the integration of Africa is a must. It is good that we are again reigniting the fire of integration. In the case of East Africa, all the countries have now agreed on the concept of confederation as a first step towards the federation. A constitutional drafting committee comprised of delegates from all the member states is now working. It is comprised of the following distinguished East Africans. The Honorable Dr. Justice Benjamin Odoki, Uganda. Professor Murin Wartanga, Uganda. The Honorable Amos Wako, Kenya. Mr. Peter Chiguta, Kenya. Teofire Mbonera, Rwanda. Johnny Nshunguyinka, Nshunguyinka. Rwanda, Professor Alexander Makuriro, Tanzania, Mr. Idra Madan Mandi, Tanzania, Dr. Serge Ngenda Kumana, Burundi, Imana in Chirun means God. D don't put it in your own confusion. <laughs> You see, some of the some of the people have got evil evil thoughts. <laughs> Imana, Imana in Sinyarwanda Chirundi means God. Uh. Mr. Salvatore Ntibazo Nkiza, Burundi. No, there's a, there's a, a, a woman. Mrs. Mary James Ajiti, South Sudan. That's a good point. Next time I'll put a woman. Uh, next time, I, I repent my sins. But Christianity provides for forgiveness. Apoyo Matek. Mr. Arbino Polich, South Sudan. They were given seven months to produce a draft. I was given the present task of championing the cause of the East African Federation. and our current chairman, His Excellency Paul Kagame, President of Rwanda. That is exactly what I'm doing now. I'm now mobilizing you for the Federation. <laughs> the political 
economic integration of Africa is about three things. Prosperity through trade in the common market. Strategic security through political integration where possible. And exploiting the fraternity, linguistically, culturally, and the linkages among the four nations of Africa. The four nations of Africa are the Niger Congo, the Nairo Saharan, the Afro-Asiatic, and the Khoisan. The speech I gave to the Constitutional Drafting Committee on the 23rd of April 2019 at Entebbe, plus other relevant documents, should be given to all members of Parliament and sold in bookstores so that the detailed reasoning is known to all East Africans. I wish to end this address by thanking Parliament for enacting the following legislations during the last session. They are all listed here, the ones you enacted. 26 bills, they are all here. The, then uh, the proposed legislative program is also here. Uganda Institute for Diplomacy, International Affairs, Bill, Foreign Service Bill, Public Service Pension Fund, the National Records, Income Tax, very added tax. There are so there are so many retirement benefits. All the the, the, the bills are, are, are here. Madam Speaker, it is now my my pleasure. Am I the one who opened the session? No, Your Excellency. Oh, you just what? end your address. <laughs> because here, because here, my, my people had written that that I should open the session, but I I don't remember that. So since I've done my work. I don't want to go in other people's Rubimbi. So I thank you very much and hope that the coming session will be fruitful. Thank you so much. Out of, because I am always looking for for new people, I want to give three copies to the leader of the opposition. Item 7 on the order paper adjournment. Your Excellency, President, on behalf of the Parliament and the country, would like to thank you very much for fulfilling your obligations under Article 101 of the uh, Constitution. Uh, the statement will be distributed to the members of Parliament and they'll have an opportunity to debate it. Of course, we expect the Leader of Opposition to make a formal reply, which will also be debated. Now, as is customary, Your Excellency, we invite you to join us for reception here at the Gardens of Serena Hotel. It has been organized to mark this important occasion of the opening of the fourth session of the 10th Parliament. I also would like to invite the guests 
to proceed first to the steps to take a, a group photograph. And uh, in the meantime, I adjourned the house to Thursday, 30 June 2019, when we shall receive the budget speech. However, I want to just advise that uh, uh, henceforth, uh, guests who arrive after the president has arrived at the venue will not have access to the function. So you advise to read the program, keep time, arrive at your appointed time, not after the head of state has arrived. Thank you very much. And have a good evening. Item eight on the order paper, the national anthem, the East African anthem and the national anthem.
Yeah. Well, there you have it. We are having uh, the president uh, leaving uh, the parliament right now. That is at Kampala uh, Serena Conference Center. Uh, the president seemed to be a little more disappointed with the economic growth for the 2018-2019 fiscal year. Uh, that has registered a slight uh, slowdown based on the figures as uh, Uganda National Bureau of Statistics uh, uh, gave the research. That was last Friday. And um, on call to the president said uh, the economy is below the required level to attain a middle class income status. But again, he further cited that the size of the economy is equivalent to 29.5 billion Ugandan shillings, rather billion dollars. Now that brings an income per person to 800 USDs. Uh, and um, in the same way, the the president uh, improved, uh, uh, commended the improved efficiency in the execution of the public investment, especially in energy, uh, transportation, agriculture, tourism, production, and education. The president, in, 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 uh, in the same way, uh, highlighted that economic growth and development outlook seems to be much more positive. And he further emphasized the supporting of local factories under the Operation Wealth Creation. He actually cited and said that, well, this is all making a, a great stride. Uh, they're making all ends meet using a couple of um, approaches, uh, the national, uh, the NADS approach, and then the Operation Wealth Creation. But again, the president found the call upon the local leaders to play a key role, a pivotal role, to make sure that their communities change subsequently a brick that can add into the national development uh, a spectrum. And um, on the issue of electricity, the president cited that earlier on it was at uh, 10.62 USDs, and now it is at a uh, unit is at 7.91 US cents. So he said that he's actually fighting even more to bring it more down the cost of the cost of doing business the president highlighted that it is still high i'm grateful that he has actually seen that because this comes on the on the background of uh, uh, many many uh, traders complaining about it we still have our reporters on the ground giving us uh, a couple of opinions from our legislators and technocrats and of course a couple of uh, people from the diplomatic corps but going on the export promotion and import uh, substitution rules uh, to storm across the medium income uh, barrier. So the president made it much more clear that the export uh, promotion and import substitution, uh, they are the only routes uh, the government is going to use across the medium uh, to go against the income barrier and... Uh, he, he he talked from a point of view like he looks at it as these are the only strategies that can actually make Uganda reach uh, the middle class income. Then for wealth creation sectors, the president highlighted in his speech today, the president highlighted commercial agriculture. In this, he cited uh, the right hon. Uh, Moses Ali, who happens to farm uh, cotton on a large scale. The president challenged Ugandans with big long, uh, chunks of land to actually uh, dive into it because it could give enough money. But again, said for small scale farmers, this could be a little bit of a nightmare because it won't yield as it should yield. And um, still on the same, he emphasized that Ugandans need to engage much more into commercial agriculture than subsistence agriculture. This is a call the president has time and again sounded every time he gets a chance to talk to the nation. Industries, both big and small. Uh, this is another form of wealth creation, a sector the president has actually highlighted. And when we come about um, industries, big and the president gave us a figure of 284 new factories in Namave Industrial Park alone and 11 more factories that are in Luzira, then 10 in Boyogiriri, 8 in Jinja, and further cited a couple of more investors who have been called upon in the other parts of the country. Uh, to join the entire the, the entire uh, struggle against the poverty in the country. Then one thing that caught my attention was um, the nuclear uh, nuclear power feasibility study. Well, the head of state made it much much more clear that. Um, there are feasible studies that have been made and all these studies are indicating one thing that Uganda could be a nuclear power in a few years from now. The head of state um, equally looked at the issue of um, the issue of education. 
he on quote i quote the president say that we need to actually work hand in hand local leaders parents as well as the different government um, entities to make sure that education status changes in the country and um the other thing uh the president of the uh, the president further cited something to do with uh, Muslims and Christians uh, to respect one another and the nature of uh, the tradition is when it got to, 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 to dominion, that's how he went about it. And uh, according to the president, Uganda has made strides in the health sector. The president was reporting to the nation, the country has 19 referral hospitals. When you divide these hospitals with a population of 40 million Ugandans at referral, uh, each referral hospital treats at least a 2.1 uh, 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 patients uh, plus plus in Uganda. So that is something you need to know about uh, about uh, about the health sector. On the other side. Uh, um, it has been very informative and progress in the country making uh, uh, a couple of uh, feedback online. On Twitter and Facebook, many Ugandans are giving out their feedback about this and there. And, uh, I think many people uh, had uh, reservations about what the president was saying. But again, um, His Excellency highlighted the completion of the construction of the three bridges, that is uh, Nakalasi and Kabong bridges in Kabong district and Lope, uh, Lope bridge that is in Moroto Kotido district. And all these bridges, the president cites and says that they could possibly uh, boost the, the, the agriculture in the area and of course the development in the area. So the head of state is having um, the last uh, photo moment with the uh, technocrats and of course government officials and other dignitaries and thereafter they will have a party uh, that is followed because it's a norm. And about uh, Africa, in the search for integration for Af of Africa is a must. Uh, the president cited that it's good that we are again reigniting the fire of integration. In that case, the East African um, Corporation, all the countries have now agreed on the concept of confederation as a first step towards its federation. So that is um, what the president highlighted today. Um, the district headquarters, he cited that they're all going to be uh, supplied with electricity and the agenda now is to connect all sub-counties. He gave a deadline by 2020. We hope that comes to light. And uh, the 26 bills that were passed in, 20, in 2018, if I could cite a couple of them for you. Um, His Excellency didn't want to go into them, but uh, um, it's, it's, it's our mandate to, to, to remind the nation some of these bills that were that were passed by uh, the parliament the tenth parliament and starting here um, we have uh, we could start with uh, the bills oh there are quite many there are 26 the bills that were passed we had the cooperative societies amendment bill 2016 we had the roads bill 2018 we have the stamps duty a bill in 2019 the value added tax bill in 2019 the income tax amendment bill the tax procedures code amendment bill the persons with a disability bill of 2018 was equally passed the human rights uh, enforcement bill was passed the sec the security interest in movable property bill 2018 was equally passed and the indigenous the indigenous and uh, complementary medicine bill 2015 was passed the uganda wildlife bill 2017 was also passed i understand that we have our reporters on ground uh, Rita kanya is on the ground alongside of course uh, alongside alongside uh, malcolm musime rita if you can hear me Yes, Andrew, we can actually be able to hear you. We're right here, Rita? right outside with the guests that were able to attend the State of the Nation address this afternoon. And from the look of things, they are happy faces, happy smiles, given what has been raised by the President of Uganda. Well, Rita, do you think actually the President, um, you know, there, were, there was a lot of, uh, you know, fun that these MPs, MPs had amidst um, him actually giving accountability, uh, really, of uh, what the country has been able to achieve as a head of state you know it's always this cockard of what government has done 
and, and how much has been allocated and, and, and how much uh, what the expectations should be from those allocations and if you look at the key sectors um, you know the key sectors key priority sectors for, for this country I mean you can name them infrastructure um, energy education infrastructure got uh, I think over some 4.6 billion and um, you know another priority sector that I thought actually infrastructure you could say if you look at it roads are being constructed the other day the Prime Minister talked about 4,000 kilometers of roads and the president named uh, you know hundreds of roads which have been constructed etc but there are those who will say the dividends have not yet come out and then the, we talk about for instance but then you could be fair you know uh, and say the SGR like you said it's gonna take some time uh, you know in the background there's talk of how um, you know the, the funders are not providing funds then the other side you hear that Kenya has now uh, has now um, you know decided to fund the meter gauge railway etc but anyway we will wait and see what happens but infrastructure very key sector the president has, has said what he has said we we'll really wait to see whether the dividends will come out and what Ugandans can get out of it another key sector that I thought may be missed out of the top four for instance is agriculture agriculture got one trillion and here you are saying it's going to provide jobs it is a sector that employs 70 percent of Ugandans I, I, I don't know whether these MPs really uh, I don't know what was at the back of their minds no. I, I, about I, apart from laughing and you know having fun while the president is delivering the numbers I don't know what was at the back of the mind I don't know what you think <laughs> well for a number of things that were raised from yes. this afternoon one four priorities four sectors that the president did mention that those are the places where we'll have job and wealth creation coming sure. in from one of them was commercialization of agriculture now agriculture stands out to be the largest employer within our country at this point in time the second being ICT and a number of people would believe have we been able to give much needed attention to ICT at this point in time as well given that the national budget will be released for the financial year 2019 2020 next week a number of people believing when we look at what has been given to ICT CT. Yes. It falls short of what the president is saying when it comes to that area. One, another one being industries, yes. As well. Another being industries and also services. Now, services where we have the hotels and the likes, which well, again go to That's tourism. tourism. I mean, yes. Another another least funded sector. Yes. Uh, since you're saying it, it's, it's you know it's a center for. I mean, it employs a lot of people and it generates a lot of revenue in terms of you know foreign inflows. Um, we know what the records are. It's really doing well. It's a driving force. For growth um, but it's one of the least funded sectors so that is where I really don't get <laughs> what, um, what the president was saying but maybe um, like he said earlier on he said these things take time yes they do so we would believe that otherwise the the members of parliament right now are taking a, a group photo with, with, the um, with the president and the first lady as well as the, the speaker of parliament now taking a look at it Andrew and for the viewers that are actually being able to see this on their screen at this point in time right after to the State of the Nation Address 2019. Well, Andrew, those are the images you can see at this point in time, 2019. It is the 6th of June, 2019, right after the State of the Nation address. And we're going to be getting into some reactions from the members of parliament, those from cabinet as well, following the address and seeing what they have to say. Now, on social media, it is awash with a number of hashtags in line with the State of the Nation address as of this afternoon. Now, this later on, right after this picture, will be going into the cocktail bit of it, which has been organized by the parliament. And as we get some more of the reactions, another thing that stood out was the president highlighting that corruption is the government's number one enemy. A number of efforts have been put in place, but are they enough, one would wonder. Well, that is it from this end, Andrew, at this point in time, but we're going to be getting also a few other people to speak to us. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much, Riti Kanya. It seems to be a much more great moment there, but the president was citing that uh, the, the size of the economy currently is on 29.5 billion US dollars. That means the income per, per Ugandan is $800. Do you bring this to perspective when you look around you on your day-to-day -day running? What do you make of this statement? Do you, do you have $800, you yourself? 
Okay. Well, I think I lost the Rita Kanye there, but well, we're done. And uh, much of this and much more feedback of uh, the president is talk is actually coming up in our subsequent bulletins. But we're going to be having a couple of interviews uh, um, before we actually let Rita go. Uh, Rita? Okay. All right. A couple of much more uh, feedback has been... We are hoping the best is coming up. Now, uh, still in the same year, okay, we, 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 we have a, we, we have, we have a honorable to, to hear from. All right, Rita, you go. Carry on, please. Let's see what the Honorable has about the state of address. Now I am with Honorable Rafael Majezi, and he is going to be telling us, sharing with us what his reactions are from the address, and also if there are any expectations that he had as he got in and where they met. Well, um, the report card of government is good. What would you rate it as? I think, um, hmm, look, if you look back last year, the budget and the state of nation address, clearly there is say, about 90% achievement. Um, the president was, um, you know, he was very clear, it was balanced, the weaknesses were accepted, the strategies for the future were highlighted, and I liked the presentation on security and defense, um, the fact that, you know, at some time, this country was in, in a very big problem of murders. This was controlled. Professionalization of the army and the police. Um, the economy, the analysis of our performance in terms of industries, in terms of agriculture, um, in terms of incomes, um, our, our performance nationally, internationally, within the region, in terms of our GDP per capita, very remarkable, um, and so on. I think it was good. He even went to the extent of talking about environment protection, um, strategies to make sure that this is done. And I think we got a very clear policy directive to the powers. One person would ask, with security, a number of things, as you say, last year, 2018, in the State of the Nation Address, the President did mention that we're going to defeat urban terrorism. Just a week ago, with the broad daylight robbery and killing of three people in Nansana, when you mentioned the fact that nothing, the President did not really go in-depth on that. Well, let's give credit where it is due. Last year, amidst the murders of senior people, Abiriga, the Kawesi, and others, which the president did point out, were almost losing hope as a country. The president made a presentation to the nation and to parliament, and he highlighted a number of measures which the country would take. He has implemented them. For example, the the cameras, the security cameras, we see them. Yes, it's not yet 100% performance because we were told by the minister in, in charge that some of these cameras were not um, functional. Others, they had been uh, taken away. I thought the robbers, they, those who went to steal the cameras would be caught by the system itself. But also the inadequacy, they were not yet enough. But I think it has helped somehow. So when you look at the extent of urban terrorism last year and um, the situation it had caused in the country, look at the situation now. We are hopeful. We, we trust more the ability of government to keep us safe and sound. Okay, well, that is Honorable Rafael Majezi giving a scorecard of government's performance, slating it at 90%. Now over to Malcolm, who also has another reaction coming in. Yeah, thank you, Rita. So, yes, 
I'm standing in between a, a couple of MPs who are sitting and listening comfortably and attentively uh, to the President's speech, uh, State of the Nation address, uh, accountability uh, on what government has done, and uh, I will not waste time. Um, and, and we'll just dissect some of the issues or the report can, according to the President. Honorable Thomas, um, you, you can, you can uh, mention your names and your, your constituency. Yeah, Thomas Tayewa, Nos. Thomas Tayewa, Rinda Nos. Tell us about the, the President's call card. What, what, are, what, what were your observations? Um, well, it's mixed. Uh, though I've seen in uh, some things which I think it will be more about what we are going to do next. Uh, especially on uh, import substitution, which is very, very important because of the money going out. I think as a country, we shouldn't just think about export, export. Even if we do import substitution for now, so that our balance of payment can, can, can at least improve. And then I was very happy um, on the issue of uh, investing in transmission line. Because we have been investing so much in uh, power generation without uh, a match in the transmission and distribution side. To make more Ugandans access electricity? The river on accessing. Uh, river on the issue of accessing, there is the issue of the cost. Okay? It's, uh, and the only thing I don't, I, I, I disagree a little with my president is on the issue of reducing power costs for the big industries. These are 25, according to the report from Electricity Regulator. They are just 25. Now, when will the person of Mitoma feel that electricity, which you are taking to the rural areas, and then you end up having constrained demand? I think we should be looking at uh, reducing power so that it can be felt by these people uh, who are going to do welding, who are going to do tailoring. People in small and medium you know, enterprises. In, in, yeah, Th thank you very much, Honorable. And, and that's the glitch in the energy energy sector, that is his comment. So let's speak to uh, Honorable Gilbert Olanya. Uh, talk to us, the President talked about irrigation. I was in your constituency the other time, um, and people, you know, talking about, you could clearly see the issue of lack of finance for, for you know, irrigation investments uh, from banks, ETC, and, and the, the, the drought is killing people, it's killing their crops, ETC, and they're talking about irrigation and how government can help them. What exactly is your say? Were you comfortable with what the president promised uh, this time around? And, and what about what has been done? He has mentioned a, a couple of irrigation schemes, Doho, ETC. Yeah, uh, I really feel the most important thing is to go large-scale agricultural activities. In the case in point, in my district personally, we depend majorly on national rain. That is why sometimes our farmers, they get a lot of loss. Their crops are being destroyed by hailstorms. Their crops are being destroyed by dry weather. Therefore, I really feel the irrigation scheme is the way to go. But the unfortunate part of it is that it is on paper. If you go on the ground, you can see no serious activity is going on on the ground. If it could take off whereby it could help our farmers, that is the way to go. I really feel very proud of that. But you're in Parliament. Why don't you have these allocations actually uh, go into that sector, you know, into irrigation? Why, 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 why are you not getting that money? Why are these projects not coming? Why are we just, would we keep hearing the same, same, same irrigation uh, projects, but you're saying they are not taking off? Yeah, uh, as Parliament, we allocated huge amount of money just to set up irrigations, one in the subcounty called Pago, another one tapping water right from the Albert Nile to supply the people who are neighboring. But you, you know, our, our country, we can talk very well. In paper, you see the policy is very smooth, but if it comes into implementations, the thing does not go the way we planned. But I really feel that is a very good scheme. If it can kick off, I think it will improve on our crop yields. Thank you very much, Honorable Gilbert Olanya. Let's now uh, go to Central, uh, the Honorable from... Um, Buyukwethaus, David Mutabi, Buyukwethaus constituency. Buyukwethaus. Uh, uh, David, we had a lot of figures. Yes. The President mentioned a lot of figures, you know, a budget of 40 trillion down up from uh, 32 trillion there each. And um, are you really comfortable? Let's talk about, for instance, let's speak labor productivity. Uh, your, your constituency has a lot of youth who do not have jobs. Yes. Talk about labor productivity. How are they going to be productive? Where in, in, in the government programs have you seen a, you know, a proper deliberate policy or um, you know, program for them to increase their productivity at least? Okay, one of the things that the president has highlighted has been the industrial 
growth rate which is positive and apparently a number of factories have been established and launched within and close to Uyuko district. I'm seeing some element of capturing more jobs in that area if the youth are given more skills. And this is one of the programs that the president is undertaking at the moment. So I know if the skills are imparted, people will be absorbed in this kind of industrial setup. Secondly, the modernization of agriculture, leaving the over-reliance on rains and moving into uh, irrigation will mean that people can produce beyond the traditional production seasons. And if more youth are absorbed into those green jobs, I know many will have something. Culture modernization and mechanization, but we see it's the least, uh, with the least <laughs> funded sector, one of the least funded sectors. So lastly, uh, let me talk to Edwin. Edwin, your youth, you, you support you know, the climate change, ETC, and uh, I've had the president really talking about how, how um, you know, irrigation is very, very important. It is, what, what would be, what was your pick from, from the president's message yeah. as a youth and someone who advocates for you know, uh, b you know, better climate for yeah. our agriculture, for the country, for ETC. What exactly was no, your pitfall? Actually, this that message? was good stuff. Uh, he mentioned about some of the uh, uh, irrigation systems that are really supporting. I only wish that young people benefit from this because if you look at the majority yeah, of the young people, are the ones involved in agriculture. And of course, uh, by the fact that we are facing issues of climate change, adverse effects of climate change, then that means that young people should be targeted more to benefit from these irrigation schemes. I also learned a very new word uh, from the president, president, which he called the hydroponics, which means the use of science. Uh, it's a new word, and uh, it's actually use of, uh, it's, uh, the science of using, uh, of growing crops without soil. When you water. But are we ready for that? What is the preparedness I, of this country I, as I far as that's concerned? Right now, that is possible, right now. It's a, it's, it's a new word, it's a new concept, which you really need to understand how it works. Right now, we are depending on rainwater, and everybody now, the whole country is waiting, uh, depending on water, and, and our soils are very fertile. So I want to uh, urge you young people that uh, let's take advantage of some of these opportunities that the president has been highlighting the fact that we are the majority and you know we depend a lot on agriculture let's participate in, in agricultural practices in thank, modern you, thank, practices. thank you very much Edwin thank you so much and uh, yes that is it the president's message the state of the nation very captivating uh, very full of numbers and people have picked different views you have picked your different views and will definitely continue this coverage uh, well enough on our social media platforms and on air uh, so that you can take part but it's now a uh, hand over to you Rita with the Honorable Winnie Chiza from the opposition. I am with the Honorable Winnie Chiza and she is the former leader of opposition in the parliament. Now at this point in time, during this State of the Nation Address 2019, the president did make a, rea a remark towards the opposition where he mentioned that they're not, do they're not willing to go the extra mile, to do something. They come and say, do say things, but doing it is something else altogether. What was your reaction to that Honorable? Of course it's just diversionary. He wants to divert the minds of the population from the real issues. That's not what is expected in the State of the Nation Address. The State of the Nation Address we expect the President to give an accountability of what has transpired during the whole year. It's unfortunate that our President has really made this look like it's just casual talk where you come to accuse the other one and you accuse the other. If he thinks we are a problem to him, he, need, he needs to state how we become a problem. The money he uses to do activities for the ordinary persons is not his personal money. He holds a budget for Ugandans for heaven's sake. Opposition doesn't hold any budget. Where we are in leadership, for example in districts, yes, our leaders are doing the work. But it is also important for people to know that on some occasions where we have even had to go an extra mile to use our own incomes to do some projects, he has fired at us. I personally remember when I went to my constituency to do constituency work with my people and the police was all over, disrupting us, dispersing us, and I was not even allowed to do what I wanted to do for my population. So it is diversionary. He needed to inform Ugandans 
what we have done and what we have achieved out of the taxes that we gave him last financial year. A state of the nation address is basically an accountability. Do we needed him. We needed him to tell us how we are doing in terms of uh, security, which he did not do. We didn't hear any reasons why and how he is intending to tackle the issue between us and Rwanda, for example. Our border still remains closed. We are seeing our people dying in South Sudan, and yet we believe that South Sudanese and Ugandans, we are the same under the East African Community Protocol. We did not hear him talk about the issues of governance. He didn't. He did not give us an accountability of, for example, the retention levels last year to this year. He still meanders around the 33 years, he still meanders around the many times he was in the bush. That was not expected in the State of the Nation address. And therefore, to me as a Ugandan, there isn't much I have benefited from. Do you it. score him at any one point in the past year as the government? What would the score card be like? I it would be at 5%. Because okay. the, the State of the Nation address was just in rhetorics, he's in the past. Is not to the present. How many hospitals are we having now as compared to last year? How many secondary schools and primary schools have we constructed to beef up the other schools that we had as compared to last year? It is a progress report, not an accumulative report of the 33 years. Thank so, you so much. To us Ugandans, we have had a road out of the State of the Nation address. Thank you very much. That was Honorable Winnie Kiza. She is the former leader of the opposition, and she scores the government at 5% from the State of the Nation address of 2019. Now, over to Malcolm, who is with Honorable Francis Fouché. <laughs> 5% Five, is what Five? Uh, the former leader of opposition has given uh, President Jerry Museveni's uh, State of the Nation address. That, that, that is, that, that, I must say, that is very, very mean. I don't know, I don't know what Francis thinks. Uh, uh, Francis, if, uh, since Winnie has given uh, Honorable Winnie Chiza, the former leader of opposition has given has given f five. I don't know what you are going to give. I, I think you are going to give one. Uh, so briefly, uh, what did you pick out? Um, wealth creation, labor productivity, well, supply of electricity. This is electricity and wage, right? Well, the president, so, has the president has was his spot on. Uh, did, did you actually, were you impressed? We sat for long. One of the longest state of the nation speeches ever before. Well, the time he spent um, g giving this speech self tells you how long he has been in power. He speaks until everybody, you know, is tired and... But he gave you numbers, start, Francis. Start he, moving they up. were numbers, good numbers. Presidents are supposed to mind the time, you speak for 30 minutes and finish. You don't speak, this international, I've never had such a speech. You know, it's a record speech that you speak for four hours in a state of the nation. We have to go and do other things, that is one. But two, that uh, you have a, 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 a fast-growing economy, the best in Africa, but our people are not at that level. When you go to the villages, poverty is increasing. People are aggressing. There's, you know, you know, the standards of living are, are, are so low. So there is a disconnect between his figures and the people. And for me, you can you can easily think that he has lost touch with the reality. So you th you're saying the figures that Uganda has been among uh, the fastest growing economies in the world between the years he mentioned. Uh, you think there's a mistake there? Was he lying to the country? He either has been given even wrong figures or he is deliberately trying to tell us uh, what is not on the ground or, or he has lost touch with reality. Can you pick a positive from the State of the Nation address? At least, I mean, the, the, the delivery on energy projects we have seen Simba being commissioned, Karuma is on the way with 600 megawatts and, and others and you know trying to extend electricity to people. Uh, we know that it has challenges but can you, what, what positives can All you pick that from this? What he has this? said is positive but what is important is the, 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 the disconnect between the figures and, 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 and the people. You, you don't, if you have very many universities coming, well, there you have it. We have, of course, uh, colleagues uh, sampling a couple of feedback from the legislators. And shortly after me, of course, uh, we are having a Kawungizi coming up. This conversation is still going online. It was great to have you, and your feedback is key on our online platforms. It's NTV Uganda. I'm Andrew Chamagero. Good evening. I see trees of green, red roses too, I see them blue, for me and you. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. What a wonderful world. Right.
Friday. Join us as we take it back in time. It's the oldest goldies at Governor. Come check it all to the best of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Featuring DJ Shy, Roswa, Frank, Mark Rebel, DJ Brian, Select J, MC Moseso, and guest DJ Rutter. Entrance is only 30,000 shillings. Powered by Radio One, NTV, Rock Toko, Jumai Property Consultant, and Governor. Whatever you mood, we've got the color. Ramadan Minute is brought to you by At the New Bay, we create the home you love with our luxurious furnishing and building products. Find us at Kampala Road opposite KCB Commercial Plaza. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. More than anything else, Ramadan should be about building our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it only makes sense that the reason why we feel disconnected and unconscious in our worship is because we don't really know who we are talking to or worshiping. So, take the time this month. Sit down, just you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have a very good conversation with him. Tell him everything in your language, your words. Talk to him through the night, the day, at your workplace, while driving, or even getting dressed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Minute was brought to you by At the New Bay, we create the home you love with our luxurious furnishing and building products. Find us at Kampala Road opposite KCB Commercial Plaza. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you. I see friends shaking hands, saying, How do you do? They're really saying, I love you. What a wonderful world. Just a way. This Friday. Join us as we take it back in time. It's the oldest goldies at Governor. Come check it all to the best of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Featuring DJ Shy, Roswa, Frank, Mark Rebel, DJ Brian, Select J, MC Moseso, and guest DJ Rutter. Entrance is only 30,000 shillings. Powered by Radio One. NTV, Rock Toko, Jumai Property Consultant, and Governor. Whatever you mood, we've got the 